Hi, my name is Jurgen and I love open source software. Today I'm going to talk to you about Inkscape and how it can work with bitmaps. First off, what's a bitmap? A bitmap is simply said a photo, a photograph. So it's it consists of dots, small pixels. So if I zoom in, for example, into the eye of the, the dog, you can see all these pixels. Actually, things get fuzzier and fuzzier the more you zoom in because because Inkscape doesn't really distinguish the pixels, it just says it's a pixel-based image. So you, you can see the grass here, it's, it's got s these artifacts. So if you zoom in, things get blurry. That's the bottom line. But it shows a color for every dot on the photo. So how does uh, Inkscape work? Inkscape is vector-based. So for example, I have the Inkscape logo here twice. So now, can you tell me which one of the two is a vector, which one is a bitmap? Up like this, it's really hard to tell. But if I zoom in, I'll just slide them over each other here. I'm going to zoom in really close and you'll see it right away. Now it's clear. This one is bitmap, this one is a vector. So if I zoom in even a little bit further, you see even if you zoom in a million times, this is crisp and clear. This is fuzzy and blurry and pixelated. Of course, it's pixelated inter pixels. So that's just that's uh, that's that. So a short uh, talk about uh, the two types of images. But basically, Inkscape is a vector gra drawing program. So why would you want to use bitmaps well you could do this, several things you could use them as the basis for your further artwork you could vectorize them you could use them in your artwork as part of an, an image you could edit them first let's see what the options are inside inkscape first off let's import an image so i'm gonna do file import and here i'm gonna choose a cute cat this time Gonna open it. Um, no, I'm gonna take the, the, the dog again because we, we didn't use the dog yet. File, import, cute dog. Okay, gonna open it. And now the first thing he asks is, what do you want to do? Do you want to embed or do you want to link the picture? So what's the difference between the two? So if you just store this file on your computer and everything stays where it is. There's actually not that much difference. Well, embed means Inkscape will store the image information inside your SVG file. Of course, if you start using a few images or big images, this will have a serious impact on the size of your SVG file. On the other hand, if you use a link, it will just create a URL inside your SVG file that links to the location where the file is located. And this can be important because if you email your SVG image to a colleague or a friend, then the image of the cute dog won't be there because that image is not on the same place on his computer and it will just find something that's not there. But for now, I'm just going to link because I think it works a little bit faster Then it has some more details. I usually don't touch them, but you, you can play with, with the features if you're really into, uh, into optimizing this stuff. So I'm here. I have the dog. So first things I can do is I can turn this bitmap into a vector. How could I do this? Well, you could sh see I'm going to try to have this shape. And you, you can work on different ways. So you can do this in different approaches. And Inkscape has a tool to, to make this automatically. So if you go to path, if you want to know the difference between the path and an object, go back to my first uh, lessons. And so I'm going to use the tool trace a bitmap. If I click on this, and I'm going to take default settings first. So what will it do in the default setting? It will try to for every pixel, to try to, to try to make a shape out of it, which is black, with what is black, what is white. 
and it will put a threshold on the uh, color level, the brightness level of the, pic the the image. So if you scroll, I just scroll up with my, my, my scroll wheel, you see I can change the point of threshold where I want to have this impact. If you like it like this, you can do it like that. So, and basically what will this do? It will have one part black and one, one part that is still transparent. If you prefer it, you can also work with edge detection. I kind of like this here. Let's see if I can tweak it a little bit more. Hmm, yeah, maybe. You could also say color quantization. Now it will try to, to create four levels and draw lines between every level of colors. If you invert the image, it will just make the negative. Sometimes this works better, but for this kind of photos, it doesn't. In the options, you can say, I'm going to get rid of speckles because uh, there are a lot of speckles. I'm going to simplify it a little bit. I'm going to optimize the paths. Maybe you can hear it in, 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 your, in, in the microphone, but my computer is starting to hum because this is quite a an intensive job for the computer to do. Actually, I kind of like this one. I'm going to do OK. And the, the window is still there. But what happened it's on the image, you see, it created a trace. If you want to compare it, I'll make a second one on this, this way. Okay, maybe you even like it like that. This way it kind of adds some some spunk to your image. I, I, I like to combine the black and white with the original photo. But for now, so what's so now we have a few approaches. So if you zoom into the ear, you, you remember it gets kind of fuzzy. Huh? And now if you zoom into the ear here, let's see, it remains crisp and sharp. This is oh, a piece of work. You can use this at whatever size. It will stay sharp. It will, this one too, you see? It has some random shapes, but it stays sharp. The eye stays sharp. Um, and let, let's just keep one of the two because otherwise, but what will you see if you zoom in? These are really, a lot of dots, a lot of nodes, and all these nodes, this is like a huge image. It consists of over 6,500 nodes, and, and this, this can really go high. But this way, you can convert an image into something else, and you, you can start doing fun things. You, you could simplify it, or um, for example, if you say, I'm going to do like a rectangle here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, uh, and you and this and uh, already you halved, you, you took away two and a half thousand nodes. This way you can play with with your image. Now you can uh, add some color. You can add a gradient. Wait, where's gradient tool? And this way you, you, you can create some simple artwork. Now, of course, our bitmap is more than one color. So you might think I would like to have more colors in my bitmap. So I go to path, I go to trace bitmap. And now I can select multiple scans. It will create a group of paths. It actually explains it too. You see, I'm going to work on it through the colors. And you see it makes like some kind of washed off image. Sometimes you get a better result if you just go to the grays because it won't bother about the colors then. You say eight or 10 or 12, as much as you 
think is needed for the detail to cre create the image. And what will you see now? Um, if you do OK, it will actually cover the whole picture. There's one small thingy, but I'll, I'll, sh I'll demonstrate this in, in, in another picture. So now this way you, you can create, um, again, a vectorized image. But if you, if you zoom in, the eye is pretty sharp. But you see you have like all these kinds of random shapes. Actually, if you, if you would ask an artist to draw a dog vectorially, he would make it quite different. He would really off probably have more nicely lines and he would follow the, con the shape of, of the nose and the eyes. This is pure mathematical. Um, let's take a second bitmap. It's a sketch now from a cat. So I'm going to link it again. And this, ah, yeah, you s now you, you, you got it. Of course, you, 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 you had this course with Jürgen. And he told you if you want to trace a bitmap, just go to path, trace bitmap. And I'm actually going to do it in colors. And I don't need that much colors because it's quite simple here. Maybe seven or eight. Seven is enough. OK. And I have like a wonderful kitty cat. But now I have a white background, so I'm going to get rid of it now. And I'm going to click the option Remove Background. Apply again. OK. Redo. Now I'll do it. OK. Of course, now the kitty cat, who was white, is also transparent. so. It you have to make choices. And what is this option? Stack scans. Well, I'm curious. I'm just going to take the original again. And I'm going to uncheck it and make a new uh, trace. I'm going to close it now. So at this level, you can't see which one is the bitmap, which one is the vector. But this is a vector. Six, a group of six objects. This one is a vector a group of six objects. What's the difference? Let's check it out. So we're, it's a group, so let's ungroup it. So ungroup. And let's ungroup this one too. So I'm going to take my kitty cat, move it up, take my kitty cat, move it there. But what do you see here? On the second layer, the a red layer, it also drew the, the kitty cat. It also drew the green kitty cat and the pink kitty cat and the light green kitty cat. And of course, in, 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 in the yellow zone, it also has all the other colors. So it's a really big blob. Um, for some situation, this is needed here. It says the yellow is a separate part, this is a separate part, this is a separate part, this is, so where the colors overlap, it will assume that beneath it there is no different color. I actually prefer the unstacked mode. It allows for better hand editing afterwards, but there, I can imagine there are reasons why you would prefer this. So I'm gonna put them back in place for now, for example. Now, if I select the green path, I know pretty sure I can just get rid of all this. And this way I can quickly simplify my image without having too much clutter. Um, yeah, so that's a, a second thing about bitmaps. Let's get rid of these two. So now for, for, for last thing, I'm going to import another kitty cat. I love kitty cats. Kitty cat, oh, look here, what a cute cat. Again, just take the default settings. 
and now you have this bitmap and with this bitmap you can apply some filters some effects for example if i go to filters i go to let's see where is it uh, oil painting you have this cute effect uh, filters So, for, for example, if you like this, then you can say, now I'm going to use this as my starting point to trace it. So now, if, if I can trace pixel art, uh, trace bitmap, I mean. Sure, what happened here? Apparently, it traces the original. I didn't know that. But um, now what you can do is, for example, if you say I want to incorporate this into my, my house style, so I have like this logo with a rising sun, I put this on top, and I want my cute kitty cat sitting inside this shape. This is something that's quite common, so you want to have like a, a, a bitmap in a shape. What you will do is, I'm going to go uh, first select the bitmap, then the shape, where it's the object, clip. I'm going to clip. Oh, this is not what I wanted, so I'm going to undo it again. And what happened? Do you know? Of course, you know, because this one was grouped, you see? So I'm going to ungroup it. Select the picture, select the shape, object, clip, set. Okay, so now I have my cute kitty cat inside my house style. But I would like to have a black border around this. So I'm going to here, I'm going to set my stroke style. Oh, look, it get crashed. Let's restart Inkscape. This is a nice thing about Inkscape. If you enable it, you can actually, let's see how far it got. Uh, you can get back to pretty much the moment he crashed. So this is, I, I think this is the, the first time Inkscape, Inkscape crashed for me in half a year maybe maybe even more anyways but it has this really cool auto save feature so if i want to have a black border around this so i'm going to the fill and stroke settings fill and stroke uh, export fill and stroke going to stroke stroke but why isn't he showing my stroke because a clip cannot have a stroke. It's fully defined by the, the the image inside. So what I'm am I going to do? I'm going to duplicate it. So edit, duplicate. I'm gonna go to object again. I'm gonna release the kitty cat now. And now I actually have two of these. You see, so I'm gonna put this one on top. And now I can ha give this one the house style i'll just leave it as it was and i have my logo now i want to export this as a bitmap again so i'm going to select it and i'm going to export it file export png and here inkscape only ex exports as png this is a decision they made and i actually like it because png is a very nice format so you, you can give it a resolution. For example, I say, I'm going to save it at 125 DPI. Where I'm going to save it, I'm going to save it as kitty. Kitty 
style and you'll see now the image is located okay so i'm gonna put a home kitty style that's my image here it is of course uh, if you And this is just a, a PNG, so you, you, you can, if you zoom in, of course, you will see the pixels again because it's it's a bitmap now. So you, you, you can, in Inkscape, you can save stuff as an SVG or as a bitmap. You can export it in all different, all kinds of different ways. There are some limitations to this kind of uh, tricks. If you ex export to some vector formats they don't which don't support this you will get in trouble for example if you save it as well, let's say windows meta file it won't uh, let's see if I can just import it here, open here, and import that. You see, it didn't store, it didn't store the clip because this feature isn't supported by this file format. Um, so this is a limitation, but you see, you can do quite a lot, and I hope you have fun with Inkscape to process images. And next time I see you, I'll talk to you about Bezier curves. And in lesson four, you'll be, uh, episode four, you, you'll be able to see how I draw, how, how, how I trace or draw manually uh, an image in Inkscape. Because if you auto trace a logo, you don't get a nice result. So have fun and see you next time. Bye.